Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Finding Vice Gatherer. This is uh, an episode I'm recording right after getting back from PAX West 2016. So we're gonna start with Mega. That's kind of ridiculous. And our first item room is uh, the freaking mark here WLB9BT0K. We also have Chaos? Maybe Chaos is what contributed to us having a better chance to get uh, items like this. Well, certainly that's like the reason. We have the mark right here. One second. Things seems super quiet. There we go. Now they are not so super quiet. Um, yeah, this is weird. I always I come back from these events and I go, Hey, uh, I know it's been a while, uh, sweetheart. We hardly talked. I was doing my thing. But, oh my god, why am I trying to do it like this? Um, I go, you know, it's, uh, it's been a while. I, I've been at PAX. I'm probably going to suck in this uh, Afterbirth episode. Well, I'm, I'm probably not going to suck in this one because we're starting with some... There's a Tinted Rock up there. Starting with some ridiculous shit. But uh, the last, like, two days of PAX, I had, like, weird psychological dependency on... Afterbirth. I was like, I gotta get home and play Isaac. I wasn't like jittery and like, you know, talking to streetlights or anything like that. Like, hey, you guys, you guys got in the Afterbirth? You guys got in the Afterbirth? No, but I was like, you know, I want to get home and settle into my routine. It's like, when I'm a, I'm a routine-based creature of habit. I think we all are to some degree, but like... Hello, Tomo. You miss me, buddy? Come on over, come on over, Tomo. Um, yeah, I mean, I would, this is, I'm recording this the day I got back from PAX. Hopefully no Pax Pox, feeling good, and feeling motivated to play Isaac and continue our streak here. I know people are going to ask, did you play Afterbirth Plus? Yes, we did. Um, I didn't sign an NDA or anything, but I also didn't see anything that wasn't shown off in the Twitch stream that they already did. So we saw some cool items that um, you can you can see in the Twitch stream that they did with uh, Man vs. Game. We will take that. But um, we didn't really we didn't really get to see any stuff that you would not also be privy to. So you're thinking I'm hiding exclusives from you, exclusive content, I'm not. I know about as much as you do. Tyrone plays it pretty close to the chest. Seems like just the kind of dog he is. You know what, I'm gonna fight this boss without using the battery charge. We can always get the battery charge on the next floor if we want it. We could probably afford to go to the shop here. I definitely should have taken the battery charge because Mega um, would destroy Ragman. Instead, I'm gonna have to fight him the old-fashioned way. I know, Tomo, it's the classic old Tomo gamble. You wanna... You, okay, you know what? You can leave then. Good get out of here. I'm, I love you. Nice to see you, too. I don't know whether to kick you or kiss you. I would, I would not probably do either. I'd be more likely to kiss my cat than kick it. You might be saying that's gross. Why would you kiss a cat? Why would you kick a cat, you heartless? Did you realize, or do you know that, like, uh, cruelty to animals is a sign of being a psychopath? And I'm not talking in the cool, edgy way, holds up to spore Kelo, I am to Penguin of Doom sort of psychopath sort of way. Where you're like, I don't care if my teachers don't like me. I mean, like, in the genuine criminal sort of way. As you might be able to tell, um, I've got, I've got a lot of stored up verbal energy. Which is not to say that I wasn't talkative at PAX, because, you know, you are, you're talking all the time at PAX. And you're mostly shouting because the show floor is, like, louder than your average nightclub. I am an idiot for using Mega here. Like, I'm stoked that we got sad bombs, that's wonderful. And I guess we'll, we, oh, you idiot! <laughs> okay, there we go. Take this, we're basically paying half a spirit heart for the pact. Um... Yeah, I thought we would not actually have access to the devil room after we did that. And we should... Let me put it this way. There's a chance we wouldn't have. Um, but yeah, you know, there's, you're not really having super out there conversations, I suppose, is the way I would describe it. You're having a lot of conversations that are like, This looks cool. When's it coming out? What's your release plan? Are you coming out in early access? You're not coming out in early access. But I'll give you like a quick little PAX rundown, even though I'll probably end up doing uh, a separate sort of PAX video as well. Um, on the best stuff that I saw. First off, if you saw me at PAX... It was lovely meeting you. Everyone we met was super nice. I'm not just saying that because it would be a total dick move to be like some of you were assholes. Nobody was an asshole. Everybody was super nice. I don't know if that was the best bomb placement. I will buy a spirit heart if we can here. Keep ourselves afloat. Yeah, I mean, caffeine pill would be good as well, but who cares, really? And at the end of the day, who cares? Let's see if maybe there's a secret room here. Ooh, see if maybe there's a secret room here? No. Which is actually good, because it means that there could be a secret room. Uh, no, there won't be a secret room adjacent to the tiny room there. Okay, well, at least there's a tinted rock here as well. Um, 
Yeah, it was lovely to meet you all. Your your kind words, as uh, as much as this sounds a little overly saccharine, are very highly motivating. People say they're like, "Hey, I love your content. Been watching you for years." A lot of people specifically were like, "I really like the Isaac stuff, but I really like the RimWorld stuff too." And it's it's nice to hear that about a series that's brand new, uh, especially as like the final Alpha 14 videos have gone up and people are like, "This guy sucks at this game." Definitely true, but we're we're moving on to our Alpha 15 update. But yeah, it, it was nice to meet. All the smiling and not completely beleaguered Pax faces over the course of the weekend. The other thing is, I played some cool games. Is this my Tomo buddy again? No, it's not. It's just my uh, imagination running away with me. But uh, also, I'll talk about a couple of games I saw at Pax that seemed interesting. If you like RimWorld, Clay Entertainment's new game, you know them from... Don't Starve is probably... Oh, that was bad. Don't Starve is probably the huge one. And um, Mark of the Ninja, of course, and Invisible Link, etc., etc. Um, they're making almost like an Ant Farm-style, RimWorld-ish colony simulator game with that trademark kind of clay polish and cuteness that seemed really awesome. Maybe, if I'm being honest, like my game of the show from the convention, and I'm, I'm just gonna choose not to draw attention to the fact that we have an inc Incubus, which is a fantastic item here, and we just picked up Steven as well. Um, this runs kind of absurd, and I'm very happy to have it, but, um, so that was really cool. Like, the way, we, the demo that we played, it, it seems like the kind of game that's super ambitious, so it might be a while before it sees access, but the demo that we played was not, like, super unpolished, although it was definitely guided. Um, Basically, you start with like three kind of... It's like The Sims meets RimWorld in space. We started with three colonists that are actually just like 3D printed individuals. And you can actually get more of them as you go uh, throughout the game. And they they have various skill levels and, and you know, a work priority queue that's very similar to Dwarf Fortress or, uh, or RimWorld. But, you know, when you first launch, you're in like this tiny little colony that's like subterranean. And, um... You're, you're closed in. You're in a cave, basically. So the colonists breathe oxygen. So they take oxygen or consume oxygen out of the environment and uh, produce carbon dioxide. Obviously, that's not very conducive if you don't have any way to exchange that carbon dioxide for air. Um, that's not very conducive to, you know, a good chance of survival. So the first things you want to do, you know, get up, like, power and stuff like that, figure out how to work, but also build, like, a... Something that scrubs the CO2 out of the atmosphere and maybe even turns it into oxygen. And then, you know, that's modeled on the screen nicely so you can see what the hell you're doing. And, um, you know, the, 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 it's modeled almost like a combination of RimWorld, The Sims, and that game that, if you're my age, you probably played when you were in, like, middle school or high school. Where it, it was like the Falling Sand game where there was physics interactions between everything. So, you know, the way they were like, well, pipes are going to have... Uh, the ability to not only carry fluids, because there's going to be a piping system in the game to, you know, give yourself indoor plumbing eventually, basically. But they'll also carry um, heat. There'll be heat transfer between them. So you can use your pipes to cool or heat a room, but you can also use your pipes to dump uh, heat into maybe an ice biome that's adjacent to you. And then you will melt the ice inside of that ice biome. And, uh... And it will become uh, water, and you can use that water for whatever you need water for, you know, to consume uh, as a resource for life, but also as a, I don't know, power generation or something like that. Anyway, you get the idea. And what's cool is that it wasn't just all, all talk. There was a, a very early, you know, oh, that was bad, in development kind of like uh, approximation of that. I think I'm just going to head down to the next floor here. That was, it was cool to see. Still seems like it might be far off, but cool to see. And then also, we played Tumble Seed, which was uh, an awesome kind of roguelite. Um, from one of the members of the team on Ridiculous Fishing, and also, uh, Threes. The, uh, kind of like, I would call them premium mobile experiences. Not, not premium in price, but certainly premium in, in terms of, like, my enjoyment with them. Um, and that was a, a self-proclaimed rolling roguelite, where you kind of control a board with your two analog sticks. So the left analog stick pushes the left side up, the right analog stick pushes the other side up. And you're trying to get up a mountain that is, like, fraught with hazards, like pitfalls and enemies and stuff like that. And, uh, it, basically you're trying to balance your, uh, your player character, who is also, you know, the, the, the tumble seed in question, uh, over the course, oh my god, over the course of the, uh, the game. So those were, those were probably, you know, I hesitate to throw out game of the show sort of things, even though you might be saying, oh god, that was really bad. And L, mere moments ago, you called, uh... Oxygen not included, your game of the show. Well, you know what? You've got me there. 
Uh, but, you know, you, what you're seeing is is curated specifically for press, so it's not always indicative of what's what it's going to look like. And the truth be told, most of the games you demo at PAX end up being better when they come out than they were at PAX, which is finally a good pill. Um, which is very sensible because, you know, their, their work's in progress when you see them. Um, however, it, I think it's always good to keep your expectations sensible. Uh, so I really like this item, but I'm going to choose to ignore it. And I'll take that instead once we get the chance. You know, I'll just, just end it. Thank you. Uh, I recognize, by the way, this run is not going as well as it probably should have, and I'm, I am, I'll, I'll give you the standard NL uh, preface here that I'm a little rusty. I have been, you know, my, the loop of my life largely consists of playing a couple of Isaac runs a day, so I'm basically, you know, a week out of practice here, if not a little bit more, because as always, my Isaac backlog is like the first thing to grow to a, a good size. Oh, that was bad. So for real, we, uh... We are a little bit out of practice, and we'll probably continue to be a little out of practice for a couple of runs, but I definitely, I'm I'm 100% committed to keeping this dang streak going, and it's going real well. I can't deny that. However, I would, uh, that's okay. I would, um, I'd like to play fundamentally better as well. And of course, you know, whenever I, like, see new Afterbirth stuff, so, like, whenever I, or new Isaac stuff, I should say, um, I'm always jazzed to, to play more of it in the future, and you know, you talk to other people at PAX, and you're like, man, it's crazy, like all these games come out, but I still just want to play a lot of Isaac, and it's the truth, man, I'm, I'm very lucky, and this is the standard, like, you know, you come back from PAX, and you go, I'm so lucky, and it's true, but also, you know, it, it, it's funny how many streamers, you know, you'll see them come back from PAX and be like, thank you guys for enabling me to live this life that I lead, it's amazing, and it is amazing, I'm not saying it's not amazing, I'm just saying I'm one of them. Um, uh, it's it's amazing, and I, I'm very lucky to be able to continue to play a game that I love playing and have an audience that loves watching me, despite the fact that it took me, you know, two and a half to three years to get any good at it. <laughs> and and mostly I just, uh, you know, quote some old alternative rock or uh, hip-hop lyrics over top, and, and for whatever reason it does the job. Okay. So where are we at here? Flooded Caves 2. We are a couple minutes ahead of schedule, which feels good. Remote Detonator is not going to replace Mega, but five bombs is nice. And you know what? We got sad bombs. Let's use sad homing bombs and get the job done. And Lump of Coal is a nice upgrade. But I cannot lie to you. I would like to in the future, if possible, maybe this is asking the world, but get to a situation in which I can... Uh, perhaps have like a single... Oh, did I, I did get rid of that hanged man card unfortunately um get in a situation where i have one red heart i wouldn't mind having one red heart i think that one red heart could really tie this run together if i'm being honest and a little bit the doodly and i'm not talking about the hoodly doodly like uh ned flanderinos there there's a tinted rock here rest assured i see it will i remember to pick it up uh i'm gonna say the answer to that question is probably yes and, by the way, I'll be the first to tell you, although, I mean, I am literally the first to tell you because I'm recording this before you guys are ever going to see the episode. So, you know what? If you're going to be uh, an asshole about semantics, go fudge yourself, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but we should go to Boss Rush, assuming we qualify, which is, I think, a safe-ish assumption in this situation, given the, uh, the items we have at our disposal. But you want to go to Boss Rush with Mega because you, you just steamroll it most of the time. You know, Mega just, it chains off of itself, so get yourself into a, a nicely stable equilibrium. I'm happy for the Spirit Arts, and it looks like win 44. Not really a big problem for us here. Oh, I don't want to be here. This room looks like it sucks. Um, You know what? I'm going to pop Algiz, actually. Save ourselves our sad bombs. If we had anything that made bombs not hurt us... I would actually be all in on uh, Curse of the Tower, but in our present situation, it's just not worth it. Uh, I guess I would prefer more Spirit Hearts, and that's what we're going to get. Okay, let's... Finally, we have enough uh, Spirit Hearts that if we get a deal with the Devil, which we will, of course, because we have Goathead, I don't feel like I'm going to be like, oh, this is a scary moment, you know? Do I take this or do I not take this? Instead, I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm in. Which is a, a, a very nice... I was going to see... <laughs> It's going to get real weird with it. It's a very pleasurable situation to be in. Um, 
you don't use pleasurable unless you're like a 50 year old man talking about getting your dick sucked. That is not a young man's word to be used in platonic situations. That is exclusively a middle aged blowjob sort of scenario. Ooh, your mouth movements are very pleasurable. Ooh, maybe I love your way. I love when you give me BJ's. I can't hit that Peter Frampton high note there. But I did order. A hamburger called the Peter Frampton High Note this weekend. That's not true, but I did see it on the menu at the Hyatt. Now I'm just getting into some stupid wordplay that makes me feel good, but is not really accessible. Um, so I, I stupidly took the nine volt. Um, I didn't, I didn't not know what I was doing, but I was like, you know, it, it's probably not worth the amount of HP I gave it. But I like that it will very slightly increase the speed at which we generate uh, mega charges here. Come down, don't come around here no more. That's probably the worst Tom Petty impression in history. What's your favorite Tom Petty song? My favorite's the one where he goes, Yeah, man, brown eyed girl. I know that's not Tom Petty. Don't, don't mess with the bull, you get the horns. What is that? That's, I'm just covering up for my own mistake right now. Oh, You know what's funny is that being at PAX, um, and this was actually like one of the, and I'm not rubbing it in, but it's one of the better PAX experiences we've had. Which, whenever you say it's, it's one of the better experiences and not one of the best, it seems to imply that usually it sucks. That's not the case, but you know, usually we have a pretty good time at PAX this time. I think we had an even better than average time. Not all PAXs for us have been created equal. You, largely, you know, you, you get what you give, but... Can I even open this? I can't open a chest, but I can use a key. Very strange. I will take that. Um, you, I live in this video game bubble where, you know, I'm talking to you all and you're all like, oh, how was PAX? How was PAX? Everyone here knows what PAX is. Penny Arcade Expo. Most people. I shouldn't assume everyone. We were getting like Uber rides, taxi rides downtown Seattle. People have no fucking idea what PAX is. Not to say it's like a lesser known convention. I'm just saying like, you know, you get an Uber, people are like, why is everybody wearing a video game costume? You're like, oh, there's a video game expo this weekend. Oh, hell no. <laughs> like they're like, th that's like, I, I can relate, okay? Because we used to live in a, a part of Vancouver uh, where every year there was a folk festival and it would be like exactly the same kind of situation. You'd be like, well, uh, people walking around with no shirt on, you know, smoking weed on the sidewalk. And then you're like, oh my god, it's a Jericho Beach Folk Festival, god damn it! You know, like, when you don't live in a city, you're like, whoa, yeah, dog. Kids a lot of Folk Festival. When you do live in a, in that area, you're like, oh god, my, my idyllic environment is being shattered by these tourists. But I'm happy that I can, I can pay it forward. By giving, uh, if you come to Vancouver, hopefully I help contribute to your tourism experience by... You know, keeping my mouth shut most of the time. Yeah, we're going to totally go to the uh, boss trap room here. Um, just one of those things, you know. As as a tourist, you have to accept you're fucking up people's day in the city. People are like, why is it so busy? This sucks. I feel you, dude. That's that. It's a bummer if you're in that situation. And then you, you pay it forward by, you know, just shutting your mouth and going like, let them have their fun and then I'll see you next year, right? But it's, it's really funny that when you live in this video game bubble, it's the same thing. Like, if, if I was driving Uber in Vancouver and I saw, like, a bunch of people with, like, long hair calling each other bro or something. I'd be like, why are all these, like, California dudes here? Yo, bro, it's the Worldwide Surfing Championship this weekend. Oh, hell no! Or maybe I'd be like, oh, hell yes. Maybe I'd say, oh, my, my, oh, hell yes, time to put on that party dress. Because it's the last dance with Mary Jane. One last time to cure the pain. There's a Tom Petty callback reference, the likes of which we've never seen before. Um, I mean, there's two ways out of the situation. One is you just fucking, you know, use the Emperor card. The other way is you just murder the things you're fighting. And I think we're just gonna murder the things we're fighting here and then I don't even think we use the Emperor card on Boss Rush because Mega with the added addition of 9 volt might be good enough uh, to carry us there but we'll see we'll see it's always nice for us to be in Seattle as well because it's so close and it's I mean I'm not trying to hold this against you alright if you're not from Canada you may not realize and even if you are from Canada you may not realize Seattle and Vancouver are three hours away from each other by car. 
I mean, the cities themselves, obviously, if we're going to get really pedantic, would require a car with quite a lot of horsepower. I mean, each one of those cities probably weighs, you know, several trillion tons. But y if you are just going from one city to the other, you get my point here. Um, that, that was me making a terrible joke about mass. Either way, um, it, they're super close, but people would be like, man, you must be exhausted. You came in from Canada. And I'm like, dude, you flew from New York City to Washington State? You think I'm tired? I woke up at 11 a.m., got in my car, you know, leisurely drank a coffee and showed up at the hotel. It's no problem. You got up at 6 in the morning, but then I go, oh, yeah, you know, it's hard going city to city here. Like, it's a, it's a hard life flying around playing video games. This is a real tricky situation. Not that I'm trying to rub it in. We might as well take Mr. Mega. We've got, like, all these bomb synergies. Let's get stacked. And you know what? I mean, blank card could be cool, but let's let's take it to the next level on these bomb synergies, dude. I'm I'm invested. And I'm hoping that Mega stands. Like, Mega allows us to just chain this non-stop. We do have Bomb Bag as well, so... If we ever need to throw a bomb in here, that shouldn't be a problem. Please just... Ah, I knew it, I knew it. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. We are getting some... Spiders out of this as well. And the spiders are gonna be quite... Po Franca Potente, given the situation. Who's Franca Potente? Oh, uh, you don't know? She's the love interest slash femme fatale from the first Jason Bourne film. I was born a Jason Bourne. Double life, but I could have sworn. I'm played by Matt D. Matt, Matt D, Matt Damon. I should have just used Franca Potente, but... Pretente, I don't know where I'm even going with this anymore. That's the other thing is that, you know, I've, I've been away long enough and, and enough times to know that it takes a while to get back into that trademark Northern Lion style of riffing that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm happy to have cultivated an audience where me, like, not being very funny is also funny. Like, it's, it's really flattering because, you know, nobody expects you to be entertaining. So they go, don't worry, you're not funny most of the time. So that makes me feel good and, like, I'm spending my life making wise decisions, but, um, for real, like, uh, I, I know, you might be saying this, this commentary is garbage. It is, it is, you know, it's trash. It's always trash, though, just, you know, this man's trash is no man's treasure. Empty Vessel is pretty stupid, and I mean that in, like, the nicest way possible. It's very dumb that we've gotten so many Deal with the Devil items that are, like, really, really good. The, I'm actually happy that this isn't like your classic, that was so bad. This isn't your classic just like, get Mega and, and ball so out of control, or not even get Mega, just have Mega. And then ball so far out of control, you, like nothing can stop you. The one thing that adds tension on this run right now is this obvious fact that we've been like without a traditional HP upgrade the whole time. So we've had to rely on Spirit Hearts, and we've been pretty lucky, honestly, to get to situations where... Uh, we have gotten a lot of Tinted Rocks. You know, if, if we hadn't gotten so many Tinted Rocks, I'm not going to say we would have been a, a candidate. Oh, that was so bad as well. I'm not going to say we would have been a candidate for losing, but, you know, it would have been maybe a little tighter. I think... Let's bring High Priestess in here for a second. Let's Dingle Stomp him. And you know what? Let's zap the other ones as well. So we got some HP that we can't use yet. Check this deal with the devil. Oh god, I almost locomoted into these things. So I don't, I don't want to pay for those just because I think it might kill me. But I will take our other bomb synergy. And I, I have to admit, now I'm reaching the point where I'm like, is something fucking up? <laughs> like, what? why do we have so many bomb items? It, it's getting past the point where it seems like it's explainable by, you know, natural phenomenon, you know? We're like, okay, we, we have almost every bomb synergy in the game at this point. And I know some of you fuckers, you're gonna be watching this and saying, "Hey, pussy, why didn't you take, uh, why didn't you take the deal with the devil? Look at how much HP you had." Yo, we didn't have this much HP on the last floor. We had one heart that was eternal, and we had curse of the unknown. You want to be the guy who, uh, 
has a 43 streak and then ruins it taking fucking 10 bombs for 3 spirit hearts? That's the worst deal in the whole fucking world. You like that deal? I got a bridge to sell you. Not only do I not have a bridge to sell you, but my hypothetical bridge is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. The bridge that very famously collapsed in, the, in America in the 20th century, okay? You feel smart about yourself right now? I hope you do. I hope you do. So we're gonna get out of here and I'm gonna calm down. Hold me back, bro. Hold me back. I'm also gonna I'm gonna patronize you here. I'm gonna let you know that I mean no ill will by this, but I saw it happen at PAX and it broke my heart. I know not everybody uh, lives in or has frequented or even at all been to a major North American city. I'm not. I am. I am very strictly checking my privilege here. Okay, and I mean that sincerely. However, at PAX, there's a lot of people standing out. This is a common. At least in America, I haven't seen it too much in Canada, but maybe in, in Toronto. Uh, common thing, there's dudes standing outside of the PAX Convention Center, and they got like stacks of their mixtapes, basically, on burned CDs, and they just go around smacking them against their hands, like, yo, you guys want some free music? You guys want some free music? And then, inevitably, and I mean this with all due respect and all love and acceptance, capable in my Canadian heart, Someone goes, I love cities, man. Everyone's just giving out free shit all the time. The world's a wonderful place. And they go, yeah, I'll check out your free music. And then they go, all right. You know, here, I put the CD in your hands. That'll be $10. And then they go, well, okay, well, I've already agreed to this. I don't want to look like an idiot. I've already accepted the deal. So you give them, you know, 10 bucks, and then you get home and the CD is sometimes... The best case scenario is that the CD is just bad. I'll just tell you that right now. The worst case scenario... Depending on your perspective, I guess, is that it's not even like a CD with music on it at all. Instead, it's you, you just got scammed, basically. You got 10 bucks for nothing. This is going to sound like I'm the most cynical person on planet Earth. And, and maybe I am. But I don't think I am. I, I, I believe that people, you know, desperate times, you know, people do things that maybe they're not consider that cool. But, you know, maybe it's a situation they're in. They're not necessarily bad people. However... Anytime anybody in a city wants to talk to you, they it's never good. Long gone are the days where you you know somebody would be like, "Oh, excuse me, can you help me? Where's the closest gas station?" Everybody's got cell phones now, man. If you if you're going to get approached, no one's going to approach you and you'll be like, "Oh my god, this is like NFL quarterback Peyton Manning," right? That this doesn't happen. Peyton Manning's got handlers. He's got a cellular telephone. He can say, "Okay, Google, where's the closest gas station?" I'm not going to fight Mega in this situation. I think that's very reasonable as well. Nine lives, by the way. Huge pickup for my own safety, I think. So if anybody on the street ever talks to you, ignore them. I, I hate to say it, but just ignore them. It's, it's a tip for life, and I got to be honest with you, it bums me out. I wish that the real world was like a, a Norman Rockwell photo where... I'm not going to use Mega for this guy. If we die, we, we freaking die. Oh my god, that was really close. If we die, we die. I think we're on 1 HP right now. But all we got to do is get through this phase. I'd really prefer to save um, the, uh, the Mega Charge to get through much of the chest. I wish that... You know, someone, and, and, and in smaller cities, this is true, by the way. You'll, when I, whenever I go to my hometown, you pass someone on the street, if you're the only two people on the block, you like, you know, give them a little up nod and say, uh, hello, you know? I know it's super, it might seem quaint, but you, you say hello to strangers on the street. Da -da -dee -da -da. But, in big cities, you don't do that. Anytime I've ever been asked for help on the street, it's always, oh, I forgot to drop the left hand like a freaking idiot. Worth it. I'm... I don't even know if that is worth it, honestly. <laughs> I'm not going to change it, though. Let's get our spirit arts and go. Um, anytime I've ever been asked for help on the street, I'm like, yeah, I'll get ready. To the Kentless Club Cafe is that way. Good, sir. Enjoy your time in Vancouver. It's always been, can you help me? And then they start screaming about, like, Vienna sausages and stuff like that. And it's like a, it's a whole thing. I hate to be cynical about it, but the world has made me so. And it doesn't have to be cynical. You can, you can love your fellow man. Just don't take a CD from your fellow man. Because that fellow man is not just there. Look, if he's trying to break into the music industry, he's not giving his CD to, you know, a Midwestern 50-year-old couple on the street, okay? That's what that's what bums me out. That's not how you break into the... You think you break into the music industry just by giving your CD out on the street to, to strangers? Thinking maybe one of them works at, uh, you know, Arista Records? I can't even think of a 
<laughs> a record label. You, th you think one of them works at none such records? I mean, it's a theoretical possibility, I guess, but that's the kind of meet-cute story that- Oh, that's bullshit. The kind of meet-cute story that no longer applies in today's modern world, I think. Or no longer happens with regular- Oh, okay. Okay, okay! Don't be scared, homie. Gotta pump your brakes and drive slow, homie. What it do? I'm on a mission for dime pieces and sexy ladies. Please allow me to introduce you to my CL Mercedes. It's a star-studded event when our valet park open up the door and sunlight illuminates the dark. Okay, let's do this. Maybe went a little hard on that impression. I apologize. Uh, but I did this all for the Mega. Come on. The Mega? Come on. So you could take that Sega and stick it up your Sega! Stick it up your Sega! I was hoping maybe we'd get a little access there, that's okay. We've done it! We've won a run with Mega. I didn't think it would be plausible to do so. But apparently the most powerful item in the game is just that good. A little bit, a little bit dicey towards the end, but no worries. Thanks for watching and thanks for the, you know, the warm reception for being back, hopefully. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching and I will... See you next time.